Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Rachel from the University of Haifa International School and I'm very excited that you joined us this evening for a special panel to hear from some of our current international students. Here at the University of Haifa, we have students that hail from 90 countries across the globe and the diversity exists amongst our students, the international students, as well as the Israeli student body here, which is truly a microcosm of Israeli society. The mix of people from different countries and backgrounds can be felt in the classroom, on our campus, and also throughout the city of Haifa. I'd like to thank everyone that's tuned in to the previous events from our virtual open house. It's been great for you to be able to hear from professors and our alumni, but really the best way to truly learn about the experience here is from our students themselves. So if anyone will have any questions throughout the session, please write them in the chat and at the end, um, you'll be able to ask our student panel all the questions you have to learn more about their experience. Um, I'm very happy to have our students now introduce themselves. So please tell everyone um, your name, where you are from and what program you study in. We'll start with you, Sarah. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah. I am from Colombia and now I'm doing my master in peace and conflict management. Okay, Prashant. Hello, everyone. My name is Prashant Tiwari, and I'm from India. And I'm currently a master's student in the Department of Marine Biology. Riley? Hi, everybody. My name is Riley. Um, I'm from America, specifically in Florida, and I study a master's of public health and global health leadership and health systems administration. Thank you so much. Um, so I'll start off with asking how it is that you discovered the program here in the University of Haifa and why you decided to come here for your master's degree. Um, Riley, I'll start with you. Thank you, Rachel. So um, the way I discovered this program was um, I was in college at the time a couple years ago, and I was looking to uh, pursue further education um, based on my academic goals that I was looking for. And um, one of the things that kind of inspired me was there was a point where I did uh, a two month internship actually at Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem. And one of the things that I noticed there was the cultural diversity and how everybody seemed to have worked together um, in a very harmonious manner. And so um, just trying to see if I was able to do um, my studies uh, in Israel to further expound on that cultural diversity and inclusion, um, I stumbled upon uh, a master's of public health at the University of Haifa. And I wanted to learn more about the culture and seeing that it was also an international school, I realized that I can also learn about many other cultures, not just the ones that are in Israel, um, and connect that more to a uh, global health, uh, public health perspective. Great, thank you so much, Riley. Um, Prashant, would you like to answer the question of how you discovered the program and why you decided to come study here? Yes, of course, why not? So I already knew about the university as one of my professors back in India has been a postdoc in this university. So, but I was not very, what you can say, willing to change my field because previously I was working in the field of biotechnology and the plants and the and all whole other different one. And the marine biology was quite a draft change for me. But then I found a perfect advisor here. And so now I, I'm here in the lab of Professor Smada. So her lab, is the perfect combination of what I was actually looking for, the molecular and the genetics work, as well as the marine biology. So now I have the best of both worlds. I have courses, which I get to learn in the field of Mediterranean Sea and uh, different aspects of the ocean. And at the same time, I get to learn about living organisms and study them in using more advanced technique like fluorescence and the microscopy and hybridization, et cetera. So when I found her and I wrote to her, and so after the very first meeting, I knew that this is the place that I need to be. 
So now and then eventually everything falls into one place and another. And then I contact the international school to get in touch with them. Thank you. Thank you, Prashant. Yeah. Sarah, how about you? Sure. Well, um, I was finishing my undergrad in journalism. And I was looking for doing my master's degree outside my country. Um, I wanted to expand like my horizons. I, I wanted to meet new people. Um, and I'm really glad I did. I, I started looking for the master I wanted. Um, and then it appeared at the University of Haifa and I applied and now I'm here. Right, we're happy. We're happy to have you here. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering, I know Riley, you've been to Israel prior to coming to studying here. I believe that Prashant and Sarah, you this is your first time in Israel, correct? So I'm curious to know what your impressions are, firstly, of the city of Haifa. I'll start with you, Sarah. Um, well, it's, it's a really different culture. Um, as Raleigh said, it's, it's a very big community of different kind of people, of cultures you can see everything here, like you can meet people from here, you have the international school um, in the university, like in the dorms, I live in the dorms, and it's like all of these mixtures of people from the US, um, from Europe, from America, like from Latin America, um, and it's it's really nice. I, I really like Haifa. I must say that I like more Haifa than I do Tel Aviv. Um, <laughs> And it's really beautiful. There's a lot of things to do here. Um, it's, it's a small country, so you can travel a lot inside of the country. Um, and inside Haifa, like it's, we have the Baha'i Garden, we have the, the beach that it's beautiful. Uh, we have a lot of stuff near us that we can go and meet. And it's, it's really nice. I like a lot the city. Prashant, how about you? What are your impressions of the city of Haifa? Well, I would say the Haifa city offers you the best of both worlds. You have the mountains and the beach. This is like a two extreme of uh, like when someone chooses a place to go abroad or to visit a country, these two are the kind of destination when people choose to see at first at least. So if you are going to be here, or the students are going to be here, they're going to get these to both these experience in once in the same city. So this was something very good about my experience in here. And also in terms of the community here, it's so diverse and yet there's a harmony. Like I have in class and the lab, people from all different sections of the society here. And the third impression that I would say, of course here, that I'm really fascinated about as in whole the Israel bus system, in particular the highway because we have buses here during the nights. So it's really and really helpful to commute throughout the city and even to different parts of the country. And also in terms of food, Israel is the best in, if you are vegan. And I'm a vegetarian. So for me, it's one of the best country to be, to be honest. Every place you have plethora of options, whether as a salad or a pita or falafel, even variations of falafel. So food is something which I think is really important in a culture. And Israel is really rich in that thing. So in terms of that, I have a really nice experience in the city of Haifa. Great, thank you for sharing that. Um, Riley, I know that you've been in Israel before. I know you discussed your previous experience in Jerusalem. I'm wondering um, what your thoughts are about the city of Haifa and your experience here thus far. Yeah, I. Um, so believe it or not, this is really my first time living in Haifa and really experiencing Haifa despite being to Israel uh, multiple times before. And so I have to say, uh, 
it's one it's probably my favorite city at this point in Israel because of the fact that um, everybody here lives very um, peacefully together the diversity that you see you wouldn't commonly see in um, other countries or other countries other cities in Israel so in Haifa there's a lot of Arab Christians there's a lot of Russian immigrants there's a lot of um, Jewish people and um, the culture is so much more laid back than if you were to go to Tel Aviv for example Tel Aviv is much more fast-paced in my opinion um, and I have to agree with uh, Prashant I'm also a vegetarian so um, of course Israel in general has many vegetarian options I think Tel Aviv is known to be like the vegan capital of the Middle East or what have you. And um, I should also add that since I live off campus um, and I live closer to the beach that um, my experiences as an international student has been really eye-opening because I am really experiencing the life of Haifa, um, whether it's walking on the streets or going to different places, et cetera. Um, it's a really, incredible experience to hear when you walk down the street you can hear english hebrew arabic and russian all within um, a block of each other um, and i have to say that while it has been a very rewarding experience it also is uh it does present with its respective challenges uh being an international student because it's a new country it's a new atmosphere it's a different experience the culture is very different um, even though I've been to Israel before, there are still things that continue to surprise me or catch me off guard, just as um, learning more about the culture. And, um, but overall, I would say that I think that's one of the things that really makes you grow, not just as a student, but also as an individual, those cultural experiences. Absolutely, great. Thank you so much for sharing. I'd actually like to go back, hello to your cat, to Riley's cat, <laughs> very cute. Um, I would like to go back to the academic side of things quickly, um, because you know the three of you are studying in very different programs of the 18 programs that we offer. Um, I'm curious to know, um, for example, I know the programs you guys are in, there's either field work, research out in the field, or academic tours, or site visits, or things like that. Can you tell me about those extracurricular uh, programs or research in your program, and the added value of having that experience outside of the classroom? Riley, we'll start with you. Yeah, of course. Um, so when it comes to like anything I guess, uh, academic field trips. It's not really something that would be commonly found within my concentration. I would also think because of COVID-19 and all of those um, uh, restrictions that we had at one point, um, it probably was just not a feasible thing. Um, however, I can say that um, part of my degree comes with this uh, requirement called the Applied Practicum Experience or the APE, where you complete 150 hours or so at a site, um, whether you're doing research or working at a department, et cetera. And my APE um, has consisted of primarily remote work because of COVID, but it involved me um, developing a World Health Organization course on healthy and safe teleworking. Um, I'm also in the process of writing um, grants based on environmental wearable devices and establishing the University of Haifa as a World Health Collaborating Center. Um, so I would say that those experiences have been um, really incentivizing. Um, and it's not my area of expertise, uh, these different aspects, but it helps me to expand more on that knowledge of being a good public health professional. Great, thank you. Before I continue to everyone else, I would just like to say that um, our fourth student panelist has just joined us. Shortly, he'll he's getting set up and he'll turn on his um, camera and microphone, but this is Atman from Morocco, who is a student in the Jewish Studies program. So he'll get situated and join us shortly. It's connecting now. Perfect. So, okay, great. 
Um, Riley, I'll just ask you a question. I see there's a question here specifically for you in the chat. Um, they're asking if, do you find it difficult um, to commute from where you live to come to the university for classes? Um, the answer is no. And uh, the explanation is because Israel has a pretty good, decent uh, public transportation system. And so the fees are very minimal. Um, you wouldn't want to take a taxi or buy a car here because those are more expensive fees, of course. Um, actually, where I live, uh, the bus stop is right down the street and there's a direct line, the 37 or 37 Olive to the university and it takes about 25 to 30 minutes. But um, bus commutes in Israel tend to go by very quickly before you even realize that it's that time has passed because everybody takes the bus system. So um, I would say no. And the location that I chose, I specifically chose it to where it wouldn't be as long of a commute as, for example, 45 minutes to an hour. So it's a relatively good um, commute, I would say. And I even take the time to like either listen to music or do work on my laptop and it goes by extremely quickly. Thank you. Thank you for that, Riley. Atman, thank you for joining us. Please say hello to everyone. I just briefly introduced you. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we'll go back to the previous question um, that was to talk about the academic tours or field research in your respective programs and how uh, that enriches further the learning um, within the classroom while having these activities outside of the classroom. Sarah? Yeah, actually, um, two days ago, I was in a field trip in Jerusalem, and at least my, my master, we have, I think, three field trips per semester, and we have uh, different guest lectures, and we have internships. So I think it's, it's really, really so uh, complete, I like a really complete program. Um, the field trips, I, I absolutely love them. Like they're super diverse and cause Israel is a, such a small country. You can go from one stream to another in two hours. So you can do a lot of stuff. Um, and the guest lectures, like everyone that comes here and talk with us, they're like experts in peace in conflict management, they are they have PhDs. They they explain to us like the research. Um, like it's it's very complete. It's very complete. My master, I I really like it. Great, thank you so much for sharing, Prashant. Do you want to talk a bit about your research and going out into the field? Yes, yes, exactly. And not a little bit, I would like to talk a lot more about this because this is something that we actually do quite a lot in here. So I took this course previous semester it's called the Mediterranean Challenges, like what the sea and the community and the people are facing challenges in the 21st century in terms of the Mediterranean Sea. So we went to the two of the field trips. One was about the rehabilitation of a river called Kishon, which is, was in Haifa and how they have developed the entire basin and now the municipality and the government they have completely revived the river again and soon it's going to be like an amusement park around the banks and we actually saw the comparison we were like on the field like how it was before and how it was much polluted and the second one was i which we went we actually get to see the port of haifa the and new as well as the old one I have never been to a port before back in India. So it was some completely, I have only seen in movies, the like big trucks and lorries and the lifts. And we get to see the, everything from the captain came in, how the control room works. If, so even if someone for us, for the say, want to diverge in the field of the shipping or everything, so that's thing. And particularly about this course, which I was, I'm talking about, it doesn't have a single lecturer. Every class has a different lecturer from a different part of the country. 
many times they were few foreigners also from like the US and like that. So they were through Zooms. That was something which brought more diversity to the class. We have, and so in the class, we were just not about the marine biology. We have marine technology, marine geoscience, and marine. So the courses or the topic were chosen to be something which were more diverse. So it's not something like that. Okay, if you are from certain background and if you don't understand it now, there's always going to be something and a person will make you it in a way that it can be easily understand by the masses. So that's something that I really enjoyed in that class. And in this semester also, I'm taking a course in which I am will be going on a research cruise in the summer semester. And we're going to be actually collecting samples and conducting experiments and defining the project from that one. Up till now, I have not been discussed about the research goes as a part of my main research, but we are still planning on that and how we can gonna utilize it. But that is something that I really enjoy here, that you have get more diverse experience. Even if you are in the classroom, you are just not situated to classroom. You go out, you meet people, and you see how things are work at the base level. So even if it's a class about environmental or the sustainability, so you go to the places and you see how people are working and ensuring to work for the community and even if you are in the field of science so as i am so we have these plenty of options uh, so in the faculty of natural science is a concept called departmental seminar seminar and we have five sem departments so every day of the week there's a seminar going so and it covers almost every topic you can go and sit and listen and the speakers are sometimes from the top leading countries around the world in here the weissman technion so it brings diversity, and that is something that I really enjoy. So I would say here the teaching is not limited to classroom. You are like uh, you are what you can say like you are free to explore outside the classrooms, and even if there's something that one okay, if have classes want to go out and talk or see as something which is supposed to be free, they can easily organize that also even if they are not part of your syllabus they usually do okay if there's something which one needs to understand and the classroom needs to see they actually organize these things also so that is something that i really um, like in here the courses about the courses in here yes sarah please i would like to to say that that's totally true like the university is always open to to listen to you like if you want to go somewhere or if you want to investigate or if you need contact to do something they are always open to give you that information um so it's it's very good like if like in in my field trips um if you if you need the contact or if you are curious about some subject or about some specific topic, you can always talk with the university or with your professors uh, and they're gonna help you um, to get like more involved in, in, the, in the community or in what you want to investigate. Great, thank you so much everyone for sharing. Let's see, Atman, are you with us? Yeah, yeah, I am finally. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Um, I'm sorry, I was struggling with my laptop. Just a lot of ang um, okay. angles are opened. Yeah. We're very um, happy to have you here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So my name is Atman, Atman Rashid. I'm from Morocco. Um, basically one of the first students in, in Israel coming from Morocco. Um, I'm studying Jewish studies. And my academic background is cultural studies and post-colonial studies. And um, the master's here is really interesting because it covers um, a lot of topics that um, I never, never studied back or even thought that there is possibility to study in, in Morocco. Um, given the Jewish history in, in, in Morocco is kind of focused mainly on Moroccan Jewish um, history, but here is kind of opposite. So basically the um, general Jewish history, but there are other aspects. I'm interested in, in everything. And, and Haifa is amazing. It's the best, it's, it's a good cho cho choice. So um, I always 
convinced all my friends that are also planning to come to study in Israel, to actually come to, to, to Haifa. Um, even the weather is very similar, especially to the north of Morocco. And um, the inter, the, the cross-cultural culturalism and all the uh, components of Israeli society is actually present in, in Haifa. And I'm taking courses in Israel studies, is, oh, Israel society and politics. And I always joke with Prashant. I tell him whatever he asks, it is always, is always, he's never at home. So I ask him, where are you? He says, he's in the lab. So at some point I was always not at home. So when he asked me, where are you? I said, I'm also in the lab. So what is your lab? It's the streets of Haifa. <laughs> what I study, I just see it. So, so yeah, this is our joke at home. And if people are interested to study in um, Israel studies, Haifa is, is one of the best, is the best actually, because it's very, it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, there is a book, um, Talking about Haifa saying it's kind of the future of cross-cultural com communication. So in in um in like in bars, um nightlife during the day, you just see everything that's that you hear about Israel, those are Israeli people. So yeah. Great, thank you so much, Atman, for sharing that and your experience here. And for those that missed the inside joke, Prashant and Atman are roommates here in the dorms together. <laughs> um, actually, it's great that you mentioned Prashant's work in the lab because that's one of my questions. So we'll, we'll go in that direction. Um, Prashant, can you talk a bit about the lab you're working in and the research that you're doing? Yes, I would like to. So the lab that I'm working for right now is currently called the Gene Regulation and Developmental Lab. And it is headed by Professor Smadar Ben Tabudi Leon. And one of the main research questions in the lab that we focused, how do a cell decide its fate, what it's gonna become? So this is one of the major questions in the field of biology. And it can be broken down in certain level. And so there are parts and parts of this question. So we currently use sea urchins as a model to understand how does skeleton formation take place? Like how do the skeleton cells are forming in the sea urchins embryos? Like how do they develop? So I have never been to a lab which works on animal model. So this is my first time. And uh, so in the lab, we have separate room for entire aquariums where we have sea urchins and we kind of maintain everything like sweeping the water, the salinity, the pH, the lights and to feed them. And then we, when they are healthy enough, so we utilize them to extract the eggs and sperm and then we begin the embryo culture and experiments. So this is one aspect of the lab. The other aspect of the lab is that, that we have been doing it's the molecular and the genetic work that we do to answer the question that we have in the mind as a lab and uh, actually it's quite funny that um, previously the, our lab is the first one to establish that um, as when you see the skeleton work so it says okay skeleton formation must be same in every organism so we are the first one to say no Sea urchin skeleton formation is not the same as a vertebrate or like a human or animal advanced animal skeleton formation, but it is similar to the blood vessel formation. And this has been first established by our lab in the, their previous studies. So this is something which opened new horizon in the developmental biology field. And I would say the lab here are not just you can okay so in the department every lab have this open door policy so even if you're running or you need something and which something you can't be answered in your lab or if a question or you need something so you can always have your neighbors who might have an answer or so you can easily contact them so it's not just one lab or one system it's a collaborative system and that's what brings to our collaborative aquaria room because what we also have one room upstairs in the department which is like a big one filled with aquariums and where every lab has their own organism going, growing there. And you won't believe I've seen 
such marine creature that I don't even know the names of. So at that point, the collaborative work is very much common in here. You can always find a lab working from a student from one lab is okay. Always doing or talking with something because every time it's not feasible to have everything in just one lab. So there are places or there are spaces in the department that are common. So which also forge what you say scientific communication because you, then you are not just in your lab. You are going out. You are meeting other people the way because when you want to use something from the lab or you want to use something which is in the common area. So that is also something which is really important in the field of the science to communicate and to forge collaboration and networking. And this is something that we get to know as a part of the lab work. So I would, at the end, I would like to say that labs here are will give you something which will give you the autonomy to work on it. So like this is something which I have experienced in here that they'll let you know what you want to do. They'll teach you it. And then you have the decision how you want to plan it, when you want to do it. You have the liberty. And there is no such thing as time restriction. You can be in the lab, you can work you, and manage the classes and everything. So this is something that I really enjoy because then you're not bound by, oh, I can't be in the lab on this day, but I'm free so I could work. So no, you can be in the lab any day or any day. So this is something that is really like uh, really good for me because with classes, the lab work is quite manageable when you have this liberty to work on your own. Thank you, Prashant. Yeah. Um, Sarah, I have a question for you. I know as a student in the program in Peace and Conflict Management, there's a required practicum component of the program. Um, I know when we last talked, you were just starting your practicum. So I'm wondering if you can talk a bit about that. Well, I started last week. So actually I, I came from the, from the internship today um, well, the process is like you you sit with with one professor and you talk about like your interests, your background, uh, what you want to do, what are you expecting, and then uh, you can choose between three like a list of of different places of organizations. Most of them they are NGOs, but I know you can also um, like propose if you want to to do it somewhere else um and they put you in contact with your with your first option uh i'm now actually working with a feminist organization for arab palestinian women and well it's it's incredible because you get to know the whole culture that is about this and i was really into uh feminism movements back in colombia but of course here it's Surely different, um, you know. So it's it's really interesting. I I have the opportunity to talk with some of my friends um, that they are doing their internships in different um, NGOs and organizations, and I could say that everyone is really happy with the internship. You know, like it's it's like getting to you can propose and you can do what you're learning here. You know, and it's like one day off of school into the real world, like applying what you're learning, applying what you know, uh, you can bring like different proposals to the organization. Um, you can talk with them, you can talk about your interests, what you want, what you like, what do you um, know how to do. Um, so it's it's really interesting. I think it's it's like a really essential part of, of my master. Great, thank you so much for sharing and I hope that you have a lot of luck and success and enjoyment from your practicum placement. Um, I'm going to ask one last question to everyone on our panel and then I'll open it up for questions from our viewers. Um, so what advice uh, do you have for potential future international students? And I'll open the floor for whoever would like to answer that. Sarah, please. Well, um, I think you have to be really open-minded, you know, like if it's your first time in Israel, 
uh, it's a different culture, um, as we have been saying this whole time. It's it's a really mix of everything. Um, you have to come here with the with the mind of, that you want to learn not only about your master, but uh, about the culture here. Um, there are different religions. There are uh, things for every taste in the world. You know, the food is really good. Like if I ever go out of Israel, this is the, like the most thing I'm gonna miss here. Um, but yeah, I think you should really be open-minded. You you have to come here with the enthusiasm and with the if you want to learn, you know, like this is a whole different world. Um, yeah, I think that will be it. Thank you, Sarah. Riley, please. Sure, yes. Um, so the advice that I would give is uh, take care of yourself. And uh, the reason why I say that is because um, so anybody pursuing higher education, be it a master's or a PhD, it's something that not everybody does. And the course load uh, can get very rigorous at times. For example, the master's program is only a year and it's technically two years in one. So the courses can be very demanding at times uh, combined with projects and what have you. Doing a master's is already very difficult as is doing it in an country that you're not familiar with, um, and I'm going to bounce off Sarah for a second here, it also um, takes a lot of uh, mental strength to do it as well. Even though I've been to Israel before, as mentioned, there's still things that I'm learning about the culture um, and being open-minded with that. Um, so should you find yourselves in your master's program um, being overwhelmed by the idea of not just the program itself, but also um, living internationally, being away from home, someplace that you were once familiar with, you know, there's a lot of um, support that you can get here, um, whether it's talking with your faculty professors, um, talking with uh, the international school itself, um, developing a good support group of friends, um, should you find yourself studying all the time, uh, even doing like a walk around the block is very beneficial and eating well and getting adequate sleep. Um, I think those are the things that are commonly missed out upon and not usually spoken about in um, in sort of like when someone is in a master's program, uh, you know, aside from the academia, your mental well-being also matters and um, it, it's very important. So I would say that my advice is to um, really take care of yourself and to put yourself first and to have that open communication um, should you find that you're not feeling 100% uh, uh, well mentally. Thank you, Riley. You're right. Definitely mental health is very important, especially when being in a foreign country. Um, definitely there's students build a community amongst themselves. And also, of course, our staff here at the International School is always able to assist as well. Um, in those matters. Uh, let's see, Atman. Yeah, yeah I, would, um, I would like to add that it's really important to make a balance between studies and and life in general in Israel. So do not be, do not live in a bubble of just international students. And you have to expand um, your social circle, include more Israelis, not necessarily they don't have to be from Haifa. You can have you can meet people in Beersheba, for example, in Jerusalem, and that will expand your knowledge about the country because um, whatever masters you're do doing here, it's important to actually benefit from, from the warmth and the, um, the social character of the Israelis and to make friends and just go party in Tel Aviv. It's, it's really... <laughs> It's really close, and it's I know it's a little bit expensive, but you can make it really. You can party in budget, so this and you can go to um, to Jerusalem with a couple of friends and end up uh, meeting five others from Israelis, and that's I think that's more important to surround yourself with a circle um, social circle that is not 
mainly internationals because it's important to have um, Israelis that's actually going to help you to navigate around the, the country. Thank you, Atman. Prashant, do you have something to add? Yes, I would say, so for all the new students who are going to be coming here, there's always going to be the, if you're coming to the first time in a foreign land, so this is your first time, enjoy the process. Don't get too afraid or how I'm going to book the flights, what's going to happen, how I'm going to do this thing. Don't. Everything's going to fall into place. Enjoy the process of coming to a different country because it's not going to happen again. This is going to be your first time. And the second thing I would say, don't pack too much. Pack light. You can find everything in here. All at all different levels. If you are up for brands, Israel have every one of them. And even if you are on a budget, Israel got that covered too. So don't be too fussed about, oh, I should be doing this or should I be doing that? Will I find that? Certain specific things you can, but I would say enjoy your entire process of coming to a foreign country for a master's because it's going to be quite a lot different from your undergrad degree. It's going to be more open. It's going to be more collaborative. So you need to be enjoying the entire process. Great, thank you so much. Um, now I'd like to open the floor to questions from our viewers. Um, I will just address some of the questions that I've already seen here. I've seen some questions about tuition and scholarships and admissions decisions. Um, I'll touch on it briefly, although it's not the point of this session. We have another session tomorrow at 12 noon Israel time specifically to address those issues um, with our admissions coordinator, Victoria. She'll discuss all of those matters, so I'll send a link in the chat if anyone's interested to register for that session. Um, I'll just say briefly that tuition is around $11,000 for the entire degree. Um, scholarships are available. Uh, the International School offers up to 50% tuition scholarships to admitted students. Once you've been accepted, you can submit your, uh, an application for a scholarship request. And uh, some of the departments as well also offer additional scholarships. And regarding admissions decisions, typically it should be within about a month or so from once you've submitted your application. Okay, so let's see the other questions that we have here. Okay, so someone is, Margarita is asking if she wants to live off campus in the city, what is the best place in your opinion? Where should she look for accommodation in terms of neighborhood and location? Um, I'll answer that. Okay, please. Live off campus. Assuming that everybody else here lives on campus, correct? correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the best places to live um so i mean i have to say i'm a little biased when it comes to um how i found my place because um i speak hebrew so um it was kind of easy for me to uh, navigate around i mean it was still hard but it was uh, enough to secure a place i would say that um of course living on campus is significantly cheaper um, if I were to recommend cities, um, at the moment, I live in a suburb called Hadar uh, within Haifa. Uh, there's another area called Zeef Center. Um, those places have, you know, the actual city life that you're looking for or um, like restaurants and shops or if you wanted to live close to the beach. Um, I would say the place that I probably wouldn't recommend some people like it is um, a place called Nesher, which I think is closer to the Technion. Um, I would say that that place is very um, it's very secluded, um, and I think it's hard to like get transportation to the university if you live there. Um, so I would say maybe like anywhere in Hadar or Zeep Center. I think there's also Ramat Balone and Ramat Sapir, if I'm not mistaken, but. Um, those would be the best places and where you can look is um, there's a lot of, um, I would say Facebook. Facebook has a lot of different community groups in which you can find apartments, you can find roommates. Um, some of them are in Hebrew, so I'll prep you with that. Um, but some of them also do have English uh, 
So I would say um, I would probably start looking maybe within like uh, next few months or so to start getting ready uh, to give yourself time and also uh, considering prices as well. Um, prices are in shekels. They might not always include um, everything. There's also something called Arnona, which is like the municipality tax um, that every city in Israel has. Um, so, and making sure you like the landlord. So I would say that it's, if you're able to do it, it's a better experience in my opinion, but it also can come with a lot of challenges versus living on campus. Thank you, Riley. We received another question that says, do a lot of international students live off campus, off or on campus? Um, I'll address that. So basically, it's a split, really. We find that a lot of students do start on campus for the fall semester if they're, it's their first uh, long-term experience abroad or if they've never been to Israel before and they want to get acclimated, be close to their courses and to the campus. A lot of students do start off campus. Um, also, students start off campus spending what type of experience they're seeking during their, their year in Haifa. Um, but what we find a lot is people start on campus and then, you know, once they get their bearings, get more acquainted with the city and, you know, buses to and from the campus, then in the spring or even summer semester, a lot of students then tend to find apartments throughout the city to, to have that more integrated experience here as well. Okay, let's see. If I want to apply for a master's program, when can I do that? Now is the time. That is an excellent question. Now is the time. We're running a special offer from now until March 15th. For those that submit their applications, they'll receive 75% off the application fee. I will send a link in the chat for more information about that, but now is definitely the time to take advantage of that offer. Um, I see that there's a question about PhDs. If you're interested in PhDs, please send us an email. We're not the department that deals with PhD programs, but please send us a message with your contact information and I can um, connect you with the relevant department. Okay, and are the classes in English? Yes, all of our classes are in English. Um, all of our programs are taught entirely in English, but students do have the opportunity while they're here to take either Hebrew or Arabic language courses in addition to their master's program. Are any of you taking Hebrew or Arabic while you're here? Just out of curiosity. Okay, it is an option if anyone is interested. Um, if there are no more questions, I'll ask my panelists if anyone has anything that they would like to add. We've covered it all, perfect. <laughs> so again, I would like to thank all of our viewers for tuning in and watching this session. I would like to thank all of you, Prashant, Sarah, Riley, and Atman for taking the time to share your experience with us. And again, I'd like to remind everyone about those that submit their applications by March 15th will receive 75% off the application fee. And thank you everyone for tuning in. We hope to see you in Haifa this fall. Yeah. Thank you so much for hosting us. Thank you. Thank you.